Hello, I'm Red, and today I'm going to be reading some r slash regular revenge, read by Red. <laughs> Ready? Okay, let's go. Girlfriend cheats with stepbrother. I ruin her life. Short backstory, I work for a company where I travel a lot with my stepbrother, and a few months ago I convinced my girlfriend to hop on with us. We have a long chain of command, but I'm their direct boss. This job also drug tests. The main story. My girlfriend joined up with us and was able to complete two jobs, each job site being three months long with us. I noticed something was off with her halfway through the first job. She was constantly going over to my stepbrother's hotel room to smoke weed with him. I don't do that, so she couldn't smoke with me. After the completion of the first job, I knew something was definitely going on and confronted her about it. She brushed it off as me being jealous. A few days ago, she was forced to tell the truth or her best friend would tell me. She had been cheating on me with multiple different guys at each job site, one of them being my stepbrother. The revenge. As soon as I heard this, I began seeing red. I instantly started plotting my revenge. I called up my boss and told them that my ex-girlfriend and my stepbrother lied on their drug test. They were retested and failed. Both of them lost their jobs. Next, I left an anonymous tip to the police about their less than legal habits. Lone Star State carries a heavy penalty fine for this stuff. They got busted and charged with a misdemeanor. Now, for the finale, I informed her family of her actions and they completely shut her out. They liked me more. Now they are both thousands of miles from home with no job, no money. She can't afford the payments on her brand new car, a criminal charge, and she has nowhere to go home to. You know what? That's what you get for cheating. See that thumbs up button? Push that right now to give this video a like and we'll get on with our next story. Cheetah gets just what the doctor ordered. All right, this is a long one, but I feel the context helps. I'm not sure if this pe is petty or perhaps more. E either way, this happened when I was right out of high school with my first girlfriend whom I was in love with. We had been together for our last year and a half of high school. We were each other's firsts in many ways and being young and naive, I thought I'd found the one and that it was going to go on forever. The summer after we graduated was great and things were going well, but she received an athletic scholarship for soccer to a university about three to four hours away. Being the hopeless romantic I am, I thought, no big deal, I can make this work. We're in love after all. This was about 16 years ago now, so FaceTime was not a thing, but we would talk on the phone whenever we could, or maybe have a little AIM session. Oh. <laughs> Remember. While in high school, my girlfriend would drink at parties, like many teens do at that age. I never tried drinking and actually haven't to this day. I'm now 35. But once she went off to college, she really seemed to go into full party mode. I didn't really care much except for the fact that she had an athletic scholarship that could be revoked if she was caught. Also, due to the season starting in the fall, she went off to school early so the campus wasn't fully occupied, so I thought again it seemed a bit risky. I was assured that all of the coaches and RAs were cool with it. Well, being the younger and much more insecure guy that I was at the time, I started to get nervous when I found out the men's and women's soccer teams were both there. Slowly, over the first couple of weeks she was away, calls would get sent to voicemail, or if they were answered she would be with friends. This was wreaking havoc on my teenage brain and heart. So in my mind, the idea of being a hopeless romantic was to make the drive unannounced and surprise her at school. This was before the days of smartphones and GPS units, and I didn't have her dorm number or anything, so I jumped on MapQuest and printed directions to the university and figured I would call her when I got there, and voila, problem solved. So. I hopped in my car with a CD I'd burned for her the night before and made the four hour drive to a city I'd never been to. Upon arriving there, I called her and received no answer. Maybe she was at practice since it was still earlier in the day, so I decided to drive through the campus to get an idea of where things were. I'm cruising through the campus and nearly hit this guy who ran out in front of me. We both fully saw it happening in slow motion, but luckily avoided any incident. 
It was like that scene in Pulp Fiction where Marcellus walks in front of Butch's car and they lock eyes, except I didn't run him down. <laughs> After that little shake up, I decided to shoot her another call and this time she picked up. Practice had just finished and they went to Dairy Queen after. I ended up asking which dorm she was in in case I wanted to send her a letter in the mail. Smooth, I thought. I drove to a store near the campus and grabbed a card, some flowers and her favorite candy. Somehow I still remember they were crispy M&Ms. I ended up heading to her dorm with my gifts in tow, knocked in on the door and said, surprise, only she didn't look happy surprised to see me. She looked uncomfortably surprised to see me. That's when I noticed another person in her dorm. And lo and behold, it was the guy I'd almost hit with my car. I didn't know what to do, so I just said, oh, okay, this was for you, and handed her the stuff I brought. I sulked back to my car feeling like a total dumbass for wasting my time and emotions on this girl, only to have her and some guy play me. On the way home, she called to try and explain that they had started dating and that he was an upperclassman and also one of the coaches. That's when it clicked. She's mentioned this guy before and coincidentally, he would always be around when she was with friends. I also remembered he was one of the cooler upperclassmen, men's RAs, who was also old enough to buy beer for everyone. I told her I was done and I didn't want to speak to her again. The whole drive home I was trying to come up with a way to get back at them for breaking my heart and by the time I got home I come up with my plan. Her mother was a doctor and this was the early 2000s where you could use a free email service and get an at doctors.com address. I set one up under her mother's name. I also knew this guy's first name and that he was a soccer coach player on the team. He was an upperclassman so I searched for the the university's roster from past seasons and games and this being a smaller town where there weren't many guys with the same first name and I was able to get his full name. Finally, I emailed the Dean and CC'd the athletics directors listed on the university site from my new at doctors.com email as a concerned mother. I was concerned about a coach RA having a relationship with a freshman female player and also for a coach RA to be supplying underage teenagers with alcohol on school property. My now ex-girlfriend ended up calling me a few weeks later to tell me she was sorry. We chatted for a few minutes and she mentioned that her and her new boyfriend were in some kind of trouble with the school and he ended up being kicked off the team as well as being kicked out of the school due to some parental complaints. Turns out he was actually supplying a ton of kids booze and stuff and allowing parties on his dorm floor. She was put on some type of academic probation and almost lost her scholarship. Like I said, this may be beyond petty, but at the time it felt justified and he was technically breaking the rules and hearts in my case. I wonder whatever happened to that guy. I'm probably on some Billy Madison kill list now. I've said it before and I'll probably say it again, but if you cheat, you only have yourself to blame for the consequences. Those were some ridiculous r slash regular revenge stories, red by red. I'm red, in case you didn't realize, it's me. I hope you guys enjoyed them. So if you did, please give the like button a poke and please subscribe as well while you're there. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when my videos are posted every day. That's when they're posted. They're posted every day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks so much for watching today. And have a good rest of your day.